All right, everybody, we're back again. Um, last place where we left off was um, kind of staining the background a little darker to kind of get the image to pull forward some against the leather. And like I was telling you in the last video, you know how I water it down. You can see how it's not as dark as you would imagine it to. Of course, it is in the deeper spots, but as you go around, you kind of feather it off. Um, so what I'm going to be doing today is um, I'm going to be using a product called Blockout. And it's an EcoFlow product. Um, Blockout. And basically what this stuff does is when you're staining a project, you can take it and during whatever steps of staining, you can apply this stuff with a paintbrush and put it on small isolated spots, kind of like you was painting a picture, you know, with a gloss coat. And what that does is once that stuff dries on the leather, the leather won't take any stain in that spot. So if I were to right now say this is raw leather color and I colored this whole everything in, just perfectly colored it, you know, just like a little kid would in a coloring book or whatever and filled everything over and let that dry and stain everything black, this image will still for the most part stay um, this color other than the little spots that are recessed down which obviously are going to pick up the stain but a majority of that will pull out with like a little piece of scrunched up paper towel or something and a lot of elbow grease it'll pull some of that out so it'll really keep this pattern fairly clean of free of stain so since with my particular situation is I only use three different colors in the projects that I've been making you know it's kind of like a little thing that I like doing with the color um, I'm gonna do a little bit of block outing on this and I'll explain more on that here in a second but the goal is to kind of give the final product kind of like this mixed tone you got that dark with that little bit of red so it's gonna be kind of a dark sheath but I still want my image to hold a little bit of the highlights so the easiest way for me to always find my highlights is when you're looking at it and you look at all the tooling if you turn the pattern away from you you can see little sections that didn't get tooled like here coming up and it's shiny and it kind of gives that white outlook here and along this piece here you know and right up here on the top there's these already light spots so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna get my um, block out set up and I'm gonna get this paintbrush kind of wetted and get it kind of sharper and I'm gonna come through and I'm just gonna start painting here and there little strokes of this where I want to be the let raw leather color so Give me a couple seconds and I'll be back and kind of show you a little bit of it. I kind of jumped the gun on this video, so I'll be right back. All right, so I'm ready to kind of get back to this and pretty much to set up with your block out, just give it a really good shake, pound on the bottom of it really good, make sure it's mixed up. And I always just kind of go directly out of the bottle or use a little bit that's in the cap from shaking it just to kind of get started. And I use that to kind of just get my paintbrush sharp. I use the edge just to kind of get you a little bit better of a point and up uh, and we'll just kind of come in and I'm going to kind of explain a little bit of this everybody's art's different <clears throat> how you would see your particular artwork is going to be different than everybody else's you guys and like I said I can't stress enough I'm not a professional at this there's probably a thousand different ways to do this once again this is just the manner in which that I go about doing this so I have a leaf right here, which I think looks like a leaf. I'm not for sure what it looks like through y'all's eyes, but with this leaf, I'm wanting to give it depth. So in this part right here that I'm showing, that I'm not touching with the paintbrush, I'm not po um, painting, but this is gonna be a deeper spot. That way this foliage comes up the edge and then the top would be highlighted and then it would be darker down here to give it the effect that it is rolled over like it's cupped so I'm gonna come through and I'm gonna utilize that and I'm just gonna paint a couple little spots you know just however you see 
what it would be and it doesn't have to be solid just I'm barely touching this thing I'm just giving it a little bit here and there and you can kind of see they're just like little glossy lines right where I seen that the highlights was for the most part when the light shines on it I come back and isolate another little section one down the center of this and the reason why I'm doing the center of this is because all this is pulling this way now. So these top pieces of foliage, the light's going to be catching on the edge of it as well. So I'm going to keep all these little lines as kind of straight down through the centers. And kind of fade back into your cut marks. And the bigger one, same thing. I'm just going to try to hit um, where I can see the glossiest part. Coming down the middle all the way down the center of that middle stroke you can kind of see I come right down that edge of the highlight the little shiny part that was left in my pattern when I figured I was completed with the tooling I'm trying to keep this in frame and I'm not doing a lot I'm just kind of touching the shinier pieces In there and like I said it's just like painting with a gloss coat you probably can't tell what I've done too much in here I really hope just explaining these little parts just hidden the glossy edges of that just try to imagine if everything was dark and kind of imagine it how you want it to be just kind of hit the highlights that's the easiest way i can explain it i'm so sorry you guys i hope this is working but i'm gonna click off here and i'm gonna go around and kind of block out on the shiny spots i'll be back all right so i've gone all the way around the project now um and i guarantee you can't see here in the video because of this weird awkward yellow light that i'm using but i've gone around put the block out where i thought it needed to be for the main part to show the depth in the pattern obviously how the light hits the pieces will show which part shows to you first so we're going to let this stuff dry um i'm not really for sure on the perfect dry time on it i just always give it maybe 15 20 minutes something like that you know it was just a light coat mm, it's fate from there on out because we're going to give it some stain so i'm going to let this dry for about a little while you know and i'll be right back all right so we're back now and we're getting ready to start our first coat of stain after the blockouts um dried and like i said in this clip just before all this um i'm gonna try to put like a little bit of a red tint to it and i found that this the eco flow gel tan and tinking stain it's just tan is got a little bit of a red hue to it which i kind of like so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna apply a little bit of that to the little dabber and everybody's seen the videos on staining you know like i said this is just the way i do it i'm not wearing gloves or anything you know i'll be paying for this tomorrow with my stained hands but um the easiest way to get this to work is what you got to do is I am going to be applying this to 100% of this pattern now. I am going to bring the red out from corner to corner and make sure that I work everything down really good into the tooling. And then as soon as I get to the end, I need to immediately start buffing everything out um, with this cloth. And the reason being is I'm going to have to draw up some of this stain because I want to keep everything just kind of glazed with the red so i'm gonna work kind of work the stain in plus draw it out with a little bit of this so here goes this part and a little bit more stain like i said you guys this is just the way that i do it um for the most part a little bit at a time but up in the corner work into the pattern Just kind of scrub it, make sure every little nook and cranny kind of starts to get it. And the dauber actually, if you use just one half of it and you kind of clean it as you go, it'll start pulling up some of this stain. Just a little bit. Mm 
and try and get down in all the little cricks and corners and stuff. This thing's going to get a couple of coats by the end of this. There's going to be different ways that I'm kind of doing this with some of the block out still. I'm going to go back and do more block out after this. So let me finish up with this real quick y'all and uh, we'll be back that way this video doesn't wind up real long. Alright, we got our stain applied and now what I'm doing is getting some of this cleaned up. Some scrub kind of isolating on the places where I put the block out. I went kind of chintzy on the block out, but it's still got a good highlight tone on it. It didn't necessarily stay exactly the shade of the original leather, but it still didn't pick up as much of the red. It might be kind of hard to see in this video with all the, and it is with that yellow light. Uh, I'm just working a little bit of the excess stain off of the pattern. And once it lightens up, these little spots on these shiny parts are going to be, um, I went kind of chintzy on with the block out, but, uh, it still, you know, wish this camera's better, it still has a highlight to where now there's two different tones of that red, a real soft one, and then a more rich, tanny red. Let's let this dry, and then we'll be back for the next part. Okay, so now now we're back and we're letting our uh, front plate cover start to dry now with the tooling. I'm going to start to work back on this back part of the sheath now. And the reason why I need to start kind of thinking about staining a little bit of this now is because of this um, sew-in spot for this back dangler sheath tab. The threads are going to be the, on the inside of the sheath. so. I'm going to have to drill my holes and everything and get everything stitched up so I got to kind of pre-stain it a little bit to prevent from having to come back with stain and risk um, tarnishing my stitches themselves and changing the color of them so just as like a little rough before this is going to be a dark sheath so I'm just going to go over this with a echo flow dark brown antiquing stain and I think everybody knows how to stain that so I'm just going to go around all this edges and everything even though I'm going to um, need to burnish them and still finish them off as the sheath builds I'm just going to leave the welt out and that way I don't have to scratch it all up when I'm blowing it so I'm going to stain this too with the dark brown instead of the tan alright so I'm back after dyeing um, the back panel plate of the um, sheath the dark brown and as you can see there's a few spots like this one right here this must have been a little bit of glue that I didn't see get wet but thank goodness that when this sheath is put together that little ugly spot there's going to be covered with a um, little strap for a d-ring there on the side and then there was a tiny spot over here where the glue prevented the stain from picking up. It kills me. I hate it. And that little spot where there must have been a drop of glue that I didn't see on it. So, that's even more proof when I say I'm not a professional at this. Um, the front cover is starting to dry up a little better. And as you can see, it's definitely two different tones but you're gonna see why here in a minute uh, why I did this this way so yeah there's the front part of the sheath everything's starting to come in I wish this little blemish wasn't down here but tank that's from me to you bro so that little imperfections with love sir <laughs> so here in a moment what I'm gonna do is once this uh, finished gets a little bit drier 
I'm going to take in how we used the block out earlier. I am now going to color 100% of the design in with the block out. I'm going to color it pretty saturated and give it a good coat. Trying to stay away from that little bit of backgrounding though. So I'll probably go ahead and do that now and just leave that off the of camera. So I'm going to do the block out on this and. Uh, and then we'll come back when I do the second stage of dying on this one. So thanks for keeping up, you guys. I'll be back here in a minute. Okay. Now that the block out's dry, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that same dark brown stain that I did this, the back part of the sheath with. And I'm going to go over this pattern with the dark brown, trying to just work in circles along the edges of the pattern. And then I'm just going to kind of scuff it here and there over the top of the floral pattern that we've carved. So just with a kind of a light coat, the dark brown at first, I'm going to buff it in to the edges to darken this up and blend it into that soft. And then, like I said, just with the excess, whatever's on, I'm just going to kind of scrub it around on the pattern a little bit. So I'll be back once that's done. Okay, I'm back after buffing in the brown. I went a little darker with it. Um, kind of took everything up and over except for in the pattern. I mean, I still shined it in a little bit here. And it's hard to see the variations in tones in this lighting that I have. You can kind of catch a glimpse of it here and there. But like I said, once this dries up a little bit, um, it's going to redden up a little bit more in the top. But this is the tooling so far. Let me kind of pan back and see if we can get it all in there nice. But that's what we've created. Um, so far, so good. Um, still got to get the back side of this stitched up and all that good stuff get this part put together and then drop the top on get it glued and I'm going to work on the corners get them kind of rounded up round up on the bottom and get my stitch runs put in and then we're going to go about putting the strap in D rings and we should be complete so right on you guys thanks for viewing this far I appreciate y'all a lot and I really hope this is looking cool and hope it inspires you so Love you guys and do something fun today. Peace out.